Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nachreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 9th, 2014. Let's dive right into the first of three security stories. I can't do this week's episode without mentioning the week's patch day. The second Tuesday of the month is Microsoft and Adobe patch day, and they didn't disappoint. On Tuesday, Microsoft released seven security bulletins that fix security vulnerabilities in a number of packages, including Windows, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Office, and the Link server. Uh, there's a ton of vulnerabilities they fixed. Two of the updates were listed as critical. The big news is probably the Internet Explorer update because it fixed a ton of vulnerabilities. A total of 59 security flaws were fixed with the IE patch, including a zero-day one that the Zero Day Initiative disclosed a few weeks ago. So definitely go get that uh, Internet Explorer update. Microsoft also fixed a Windows vulnerability in the graphics device interface, and bad guys could, long story short, exploit that by sending malicious images or documents. And a number of other interesting uh, flaws were fixed as well. So so be sure to go get your Microsoft patches. On top of that, of course, Adobe shares patch day and they released just one bulletin fixing vulnerabilities in Flash and also the error package, which is related to Flash. This update fixed a number of vulnerabilities, including some that could allow remote code execution. So if you go to a malicious website that has malicious Flash content, it could take over your browser and install malware. So be sure to fix that as well. Finally, during the week, Mozilla released a Firefox update fixing 30 vulnerabilities, including five critical ones. So if you use the Firefox browser, you want to patch it as well. The second big security story this week is yet another big credit card data breach, this time through a very popular U.S. restaurant chain. Brian Krebs released a story talking about how he suspects that P.F. Chang's, a, a well-known restaurant chain in the United States, has been breached. According to information he's gotten from banks, it seems that credit cards that seem to have been used at P.F. Chang's are now on the underground market. He talked about a popular underground carding forum that's now selling these credit cards for around $18 to $140, depending on what type of credit card it has and if it has any sort of balance. In any case, not much is known about this breach yet, including we don't know how many credit card details have been stolen. However, according to the banks, the breach seemed to have happened between March and May of this year. So if you happen to have visited the P.F. Chang's restaurant during this period of time, you might want to pay attention to unusual charges on your credit card and look for uh, letters from your bank talking about whether or not you need to get a new credit card. Now, P.F. Chang's hasn't confirmed this breach yet. They say they are looking into it and in, in starting an investigation, but they haven't confirmed if it happened or even how it happened. Nonetheless, it's an interesting story, and I'm sure Brian Krebs and other sources will post more about it as new information comes out there. So again, if you happen to have visited P.F. Chang's during that period of time, you might want to keep an eye on your credit card. So the final story this week, and probably some of the biggest news, was a big tweet deck cross-site scripting vulnerability. On Wednesday, Twitter, or specifically TweetDeck, the client that Twitter uses for, for people to keep track of tweets, suffered from a cross-site scripting vulnerability. If you followed any security researcher uh, uh, Twitter accounts or, or any comedian Twitter accounts, you may have received a message in TweetDeck that could have caused a pop-up window talking about uh, how you should update TweetDeck. As it turned out, a teenager in Australia was trying to play around with how you actually can show little heart characters in TweetDeck. And as he was experimenting with this, he accidentally stumbled upon a flaw in TweetDeck. To make a long story short, as he is playing with this little heart character, he found out that it was a neat way that he can actually stop TweetDeck from escaping uh, HTML script. And because of it, he is able to put in normal JavaScript that could do an alert 
pop up and stuff like that. Later in the day, after he, he let the world know about this flaw, other people used it to create kind of a tweet deck worm, where if you actually followed someone, you would see this particular post, it would cause script to run in your browser that would then get you to repost this particular script. So it was another Twitter worm, very similar to one that was found in 2011. Now later in the day, Twitter did learn about this and try to fix it very quickly. The first fix didn't seem to, to work, but they did take TweetDeck uh, down for a while, and later in the day it was fixed. So if you are a TweetDeck user, you really have nothing to worry about. But it does go to show you the power and danger of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. While there was no real news of bad guys using this particular flaw in a malicious way, it would have been a fantastic way for a bad guy to force you to go to a malicious site. It was quite easy to create a Twitter worm that would cause cross-site scripting to not only pop up for you and maybe force you to a malicious site, but also to force you to tweet that so that all your other followers would then be forced to that malicious site too. So a very interesting vulnerability. So that's it for this week's stories. I hope you found some of them interesting or useful. As usual, there's a ton of other stories, including one talking about how two Canadian 14-year-olds read online operator manuals for ATM machines and used those to access and hack ATM machines. Very interesting. So be sure to check out the reference section of the blog post associated with this video for more information about those other stories. Before I move on, two show notes this week. First of all, I'm going on vacation for the next two weeks. So there won't be any Watch Guard Security Week in review videos for the next two weeks, but we'll of course return in July with your regular information security news. And the second note, last week I was talking about some open SSL vulnerabilities which do in fact affect Watch Guard products, our XTM, XCS, and SSL VPN appliances. Well, we have been fixing those. In fact, right now we're in the process of uploading the fixes to our software download page for all our, our customers to download. So be sure uh, at the by the time you see this video or early next week, watch out for the latest update whether you run XTM or XCS software. We're releasing fixes all the way back to XTM 11.3, all the way up to the latest 11.9. So be sure to download the relevant fix for your product as soon as it comes out. Finally, as usual, if you want more regular security news, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog for all our regular posts. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.